Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to a Blazecast presentation bringing you a game between uh, Dare and Complexity is actually the second game uh, that they're matching up in so uh, if you want to see the first game jump to it I'll probably have an annotation up there but uh, because it is, uh, there was an issue with remaking the game after the draft we have an all pick stage so no draft unfortunately cast opportunity for me today but um, going right on in and going to show you guys start off the game and uh, should be a fun one so let's see here um, I've, like I said, it was an all picks. Uh, it was a dra standard draft, but they had to all pick for this specific uh, replay of the game. So uh, jump in to show who's playing who, who's getting what. Loading a little bit here, so lag should be ending now. But uh, yeah, you got Fluff playing the Chen, so he's got uh, he's their primary support here, obviously for complexity. There, the American team. And I should jump over to them to. Uh, be broadcasting them specifically, but Jo is actually playing the Brewmaster now. Um, I picked that up. Uh, going to be going for bottom lane, uh, covering that, trying to. Uh, well, he could be on mid. He looks like he's going for a fast bottle build by his items, so he could definitely go mid as well. And have Queen of Pain solo bottom. Uh, TC on the Queen of Pain, and Hannah Montana on the Tide Hunter again, like last time. Uh, uh, X Mike 88 on the Venomancer, so very good lane setup there. A lot of uh, disabling support, um, really good slow slowing effects. Not as much stun as you generally see on a well well set up team, but obviously they don't need it if they have enough uh, slow support that they can get the Chen Creek neutrals on there and do a lot of damage that way. But uh, as far as on Dare's lineup, they got Feed playing the uh, um, Wisp. I'm guarding Wisp, one of my favorite heroes there. Very very dynamic, has a lot of potential. Um, it looks like he's going to be running on a lane support, maybe a tri-lane support, with Shadow Shaman and Chaos Knight, and that can be very destructive. Um, Chaos Knight doesn't have a lot of mana right now, but he could be fed clarities by this double clara with the West, where he really doesn't need that much mana sustain other than to get some spirits up. But Shadow Shaman just providing this pressure on this Hannah Montana playing the Tide, and uh, he's looking to solo bottom. Brewmaster, like I was saying, going for the mid, going for a fast bottle, while uh, they're looking at tri-lane potential feed. Goblin on the Shadow Shaman and uh, Art Style playing the Chaos Knight today. And they're going to be picking up that. Well, they did draft an Invoker. I'm um, curious to see what he's going to be picking up. Probably Exhort first when he's going up against this Panda, but it is. It, might, it looks to them like a dual lane with this Illusion Room. They did not have a, a ward covering this top room, so they don't really didn't really know if that was Chen or not. But it looks like a Counter Jungle Chen kind of faking them out a little bit. Um, they're trying to cover not only the bottom lane with this Tide, but also trying to cover up the jungle here with a. Uh, Shadow, Shadow Shaman and all that, they're trying to stop this uh, Chen from being interfering with the lane there. But unfortunately for them, uh, it's kind of a counter try lane going on top with TC on the Queen of Pain. And the Venomancer getting a Gale off already, jumping in, got the blink. He didn't go for the uh, uh, Shadow Strike, but it doesn't matter. Just so much damage, that Gale slows so much, and the first blood's going to go to Venomancer. He's going to gonna try to salvo, but he ha has that Gale on him. And uh, that last auto attack from Venomancer, actually Queen of Pain getting the last hit on that, surprisingly. I uh, did not think that was going to happen, but was able to manage that, and Dare G ports right back up top, trying to cover the lane, trying to use those Eidolons, but he just went in a bad spot. Now he's uh, Centaur stunned, and Queen of Pain got the Shadow Strike, now she's level 2, and just enough damage there, auto attack one or two more, and he's down again. So now he's, uh, Chen got the kill on that one, and Queen of Pain is actually pretty low on her health, has to watch for those Eidolons, but Eidolons did knock down, and now she's in a perfectly fine position. Uh, bottom lane trying to cover these neutrals. Make sure there's no polling opportunities and stuff like that. They actually didn't ward the neutrals. They ward, ward for vision. And that way they can see exactly where this Tidehunter is no matter what. And they can have the opportunity to do stuff like dives on him. But with his Enigma out of lane and no way to teleport back in. He used his TP scroll money. And now they're pushing on the lane. They got Venom Wards, rank 1. And they got a Centaur, which is pretty beefy with this remaining 700 HP. Tidehunter actually gets a kill on bottom lane. Oh my gosh, double kill for Tidehunter. They were diving on him. Chaos Knight popping his, uh, at least his Reality Rift, I'm assuming is uh, uh, cast both along with it, but uh, they weren't able to chain the disables properly. He has that Kraken shell, and if they just do just enough damage from him, he's going to break out of it anyways. So actually, going way too aggressively, uh, Art Style goes down from the Chaos Knight. He wants a little bit of revenge, trying for a Reality Rift. Two seconds done on Chaos Bolt, but they break the shackles. They know they're in tower range. They know they can't follow up on that. So not not going so well for Dare this time around. They did extremely well in the laning phase last game, and they just continued to be more and more powerhouse as the game went on. But uh, overall, they've uh, taken... Uh, Complexity has already taken the top tower really aggressively with this kind of pseudo tri-lane top. 
uh, killed Enigma twice, forced him into the jungle, who, which they're now warding, so he cannot even farm the jungle now, and uh, they, yeah, they took the tower, which is a huge amount of gold. Meanwhile, on bottom line, they're actually uh, subsequently feeding onto the Tidehunter, not by their own fault necessarily, but the fact that they're diving on there and they're not getting the kill on him, he's able to get the kills and benefit extremely. So you can see a very skewed gold graph right here. You can see extremely, they're already up 3,000 gold, when if you look, they only have 5,000 versus 2,000. I mean, hugely for complexity right off the bat, and that just shows how an aggressive early game can really uh, either pay off or uh, cause you some grief if it's not implemented correctly. Actually, tied. Hannah Montana trying to go on this Tide Hunter, uh, on this uh, Shadow Shaman. If he had another, uh, he does have another Anchor Smash, but it was just out of radius. It's a really good radius on this Anchor Smash, but Shagoblin was just on the edge of it. He got out of there, otherwise, he would have dropped down with that one. Arsal having to pop the salve, and Hannah Montana just playing so aggressively. One Starting off 1v3, getting a double kill, getting some major experience, major gold, and now he's up, able to 1v2 easily where um, they're forcing Wisp to come up, level 1 Wisp forced to come up to the top lane, and I would consider this the lane of death right now, the way it's being played with, between this Chen and Venomancer. The second he gets his Gale up, he is using wards a lot to block the spawns, but the second he does get the Gale up, or actually to farm maybe, nope, block the spawn, but um, he does uh, he does have his Gale available now, he did Pop of Clarity, and it's, yeah, I would call this the lane of death, because Enigma, is in a really bad spot right here, and just a sh single Shadow Strike is going to slow him down plenty, so they can set up an easy easy gale on him if they even need to right now they're just auto attacking him hardcore and he's going to drop down to autos didn't even need to use the gale it's gonna be safe for the wisp if they so choose well meanwhile tide is just doing so so well on bottom lane level six already against the level four chaos knight who's having to solo against him because there's guess where all the supports are going up top goblin port in top wisps uh, trying to lane gets a little bit experience i'll throw up the last it's in the eyes panda doing actually better than the invoker in middle 29 creep kills for him where the invoker only has 12 so uh Really, really good play by J.O., just covering these last hits, covering these denies, and making sure that he gets all the farm. Uh, this, sun's, this Invoker kind of uh, going multi-orb here. He has access to all ten spells, but none of them as powerful as they could be if he was uh, focusing on one of those. He does get the bottom rune, and he's going to be looking at ganking on bottom lane. He can probably do a good cold snap after the... Uh, but no Chaos Bolt is available. He's going to have to use the Reality Rift. So he's going to Reality Rift and Cold Snap him, and maybe Sun Strike him after that. But he only has a rank one Exhort, so we'll have to see how that... Uh, He's played out right here, but he is wanting to go on something. Meanwhile, Wisp has to be careful. He's not in a good spot, but uh, here comes the uh, action. He's either waiting on the Chaos Bolt. They're waiting seven seconds left on the Chaos Bolt, and uh, Hannah Montana knows some funky J.O. called missing, and now he's trying to go aggressive on him, but Chaos Bolt one second. Going to pop it right here. Right there it goes. Three second Chaos Bolt. Pops us on strike. Now going for the Cold Snap, and he's going to drop down. No way. Um, meanwhile, on top, like I was saying, Wisp need to be careful, and that, that Queen of Pain is so very mobile. Just took him down real quick level three up against you know level five queen of pain not so not so happy for that and even panda popping his ultimate and diving all on this uh your poor goblin here shadow shaman not doing hot at all looking at the kda you have three kills on queen of pain two kills on panda and two on chen even a couple on tide because that tower dive i mean just crazy and he's going to get sent back to base to heal up a little bit um, but meanwhile, just so much pressure in every direction. Dare, uh, usually well known for their early game presence and well known for their early game aggression, just not happening here. Not getting the benefit that they want. And now Gale just barely lands on the Wisp, and so does the Centaur stun. He, whiz he d does go across, but the damage over time alone is almost enough. And just a single auto attack from the. Uh, uh, oh, he does pop the Tango. If the the Gale isn't uh, probably only rank one, the Gale is only rank one. So with that Tango, he is gonna live, but just barely, and he's gonna go right back to base because that's all he can manage. I mean, Evoker is doing decent gank action on this Tide, but uh, it's costing them two or three heroes just to ha handle down a support. Well, not a support Tide, but a Tide that doesn't really need to live for them to win this game. Meanwhile, Top Tower is getting pressured. All he has to do is just survive for as long as he can. If they're f we using three heroes at a time just to bring down a tide hunter while they're diving killing shadow shamans and wisps all day taking towers uh, ever all night it's just it's not going to be in favor of Darius, that's for sure um and it looks like the the amount of pressure is coming out rank two wisps hurt and fluff a decent bit but uh he's going to use a troll warlord and that'll set up a gale if he ah uh, just need a little bit more distance on all oh, shadow strike almost landed on him did not get in there close enough almost did but uh was not able to but just this ward coverage here um pretty much forcing the uh, Dare team, every time they come up to the top lane, they're in full vision of Dare, or, or of Complexity, 
and uh, they're just complex is not going to have any of it. I'm going to probably see a dive going on Goblin again. They're, they are a little bit low HP, and there is a lot of push action bottom, but uh, they're going to let bottom fall because, hey, we got this entire top lane to have fun with. This, uh, I mean, poor Shadow Shaman, only 644 HP, and about to get Troll Warlord on the Wisp going in there. He doesn't have anybody to tether to except for Shadow Shaman himself. They're going to get together, but the ultimate going across to both of them, damage across, and with a scream, Queen of Pain gets killed, Chen gets a, Chen gets a kill. Uh, Chaos not going to try to do something, but so much damage potential come, to come back. Three seconds done, though, and with a Sun Strike, that's going to finish him off real, real quick. But Panda coming in. J.O. pops his clap. He does not have his ultimate yet, but just a couple of auto attacks are going to bring down their Chaos Knight, and that's not where they want to be. A little bit more on the Invoker. He's going to be all right to other hang him across, giving him that 20% increased movement speed. But, uh... Complexity just no holds barred. Hannah Montana up, has his Ravage available as soon as he pops a bottle charge. And, uh... Just so much aggression, so much powerhouse coming from these heroes. Uh, is really, it's really looking bad for uh, Dara right now. They pretty much every time they come back to the lane, they're going to be feeding, and uh, they're losing. Getting it's not just kills on their supports too. It, their chaos knights died twice over now too, and uh, it just really hurts their experience for a minute. Really hurts their gold, and uh, I, I can see uh, complexity having the potential to push in for the kill, not too long at all. You can see the experience, immense, immense, just completely showing how juxtaposed, how completely different these two uh, teams are as far as, uh, you know, tower kills, as far as hero kills, everything there. 13-3 and so much, uh, pressuring every single lane. It's just shut them down so hard. They wanted to have that solo lane enigma, have a, a nice amount of coverage like that Tide did, and just kind of play defensively, deny the creeps, etc., etc. But uh, just the lineup from... Uh, complexity it was just a huge kill lane, especially when they got that. And whenever they get a gale, they pretty much set up any of uh, Chen's creeps. And Fluff has just been taking advantage of that all day long. Now, uh, Art Style pouring down bottom, trying to get a little bit of farm, but in Montana here, and they have to coordinate when they're going to be going on him. He's not level 7 yet, uh, Enigma is not, so he does not have a rank 4 Malefice, which might be the uh, potential escape of Tidehunter. But he does pop a 2 second stun. It's going to go all the way through. He does get a gush off, but the Malefice, did that go on a creep? Oh, he Malefice a freaking melee creep, and uh, Tide has no problems getting away. Oh my gosh. And now Goblin's in a bad situation. J.O. got the haste rune, but uh, Ix Mike going to finish him off real quick and uh, spread split to creeps. So Rainy got that kill technically. Um, Sentry Ward on the top. They figured out finally that there was so much vision going on up there. Had to be them putting a ward and being that aggressive. But uh, now J.O. jumping around with his haste rune anyway and trying to be aggressive again, but he has to be careful. There are actually three here, and Wisp is coming in to support. And now he has almost no mana to get out of there. He needs to phase boots out. Um, if there's a cold snap, three seconds, but he does pop his ultimate, and that's going to put a lot of damage out. Oh, no, he's not going to go, be going for it. He's going to be falling back. Tiny Earth Panda for some reason. I don't know what's up with that, but it. Uh, yeah, and the and meanwhile, top lane gets pushed out, and uh, JC so much farm, a thousand away from a sheep stake. Ten minutes into the game, oh my gosh, uh, just so such pressure, such damage, and uh, it's really showing it. And he throws, throws up a sentry ward, throws up the venom ward, and the venom ward is going to take down the sentry himself. Now they know that they have uh, clear clear skies up here on the plateau, and uh, they can possibly observe a ward up there if they feel like it. Um, meanwhile, but really this aggressive push, aggressive action strategy, this build in general was really good in the fact that they have an invoker and they have a wisp on their team. Both of these heroes are not that amazing without good experience. The spirits are a great source of damage if they're rank 4, but prior to that, like, rank 1 or 2 spirits aren't going to do very much in a team fight. And Invoker, of course, the most experienced reliant here in the game, I mean, even leveling up from 24 to 25 is amazing, but, uh, or very beneficial at the very least, but the way it, they're playing against him, he's not able to do anything about it. He has his Ghost Walk if he needs it, but really, that's He's just playing as survivable as possible, and he's only level 9. It's not where he wants to be at uh, 12 minutes into this game when he was the solo lane. Um, meanwhile, his opposition, you got the Queen of Pain doing extremely well, level 8, almost level 9 herself, just hit it. So, I mean, when a tri lane, uh, I guess you could say semi carry carry, is doing as good as your solo mid and levels. But there's a lot of action here. Four seconds done, does go on Chen. He's not going to be able to get his ultimate off, so does Arsad does get a kill on that, or Invoker does. Um, but there's a lot of dots on Chaos Knight, a lot of damage over time effects, Poison Nova, plus the Gale. And uh, there's a sheep coming from uh, 
uh, goblin. They're trying to hold on to this Hannah Montana, but he's so beefy right now. He has so much tank ability with his level 9, uh, and so they don't have any more disables to throw at him. And ultimate coming out from Queen of Pain, dropping on Goblin. They're just going to walk away from these Venom Wars. No way to hold them. Uh, Soul Ring does come out. He's going to get Malthus on a uh, Cold Snap, but uh, his Ravage is about to come up. He's got it three seconds away, and Chen does come back to life. Did not buy back, but just respawned, uh, and he's able to get that ultimate off, which helped out up top there, and uh, Dare's not going to be able to pursue. Sorry, I did get caught up in the bottom half of that fight. It was split up a little bit. But uh, overall, yeah, just uh, they were trying to set up a lot of plays. But uh, the meteor action and uh, just a burst on Chen really set them uh, Dare up for at least a couple quick kills. But uh, after the fact, they really couldn't do anything extra. And that uh, showed when uh, Queen of Pain and Tide were able to take down the remaining heroes. So uh, in the end, uh, trading kills is always great when you're in such a bad position, especially the way the dare is right now. But overall, 70 to 7, still not looking that great. And uh, Wisp just drops like a rock. He's a strength hero, but he has almost no hit points just because of his leveling experience. And oh my gosh, that wand charge almost saving the invoker, but he's going to get hit by t Gush coming up. Nope, never mind. Scream Blink coming out, but a Reality Rift and coming up, followed by a Chaos Bolt. Malefist stun on her as well, but she's really low. She can just blink out, and a nice Ravage coming across it, and ever cleaning up. And all the only one left is Chaos Knight, and he's right now trying to pick off a Venomancer that's just going to be able to kite him all to no end. So a lot of stuns coming out from the... Uh, oh, he does get the last hit on... Uh, Venomancer is actually able to finish him off. The enough, not enough stun from the Earth Panda. But now there goes a clap, and he's going to drop down too. So that's the second time Wisp died in about 20 seconds. And it's just so unfortunate for him. His gold has to be practically nothing. He's got boots, and that's it. And uh, you can just see 7 0, 7 and 0, and 6, Queen of Pain, just going to town on this, this lineup here. And really, I mean, there's no chance for them to build a pipe or anything that'll really enable her uh, to stop her from doing exactly what she wants to do. And she's got, a, at level 11, she's got a sheep stick. It just shows how much considerable amount of farm she really has. If she buys a BKB, she's pretty much going to be unstoppable. I mean, it's just she has so much mana regen and she has so much sustainability. She can pretty much do, be who she wants, to, whoever she wants to be and go up against whatever. But right now, she sees three people closing in on her. That Chaos Bolt, if it did land, could have been extremely taxing on her. And uh, possibly cost her her life, but if she uh, TC quick on the action, quick on the pickup, and drops out of there. Chen farm jungle a little, bit, a little bit. He's got his mech. He's got his arcanes. Maybe going for an Aghanims just because he's got that much advantage. Um, but they just got a lot of coverage in that area, and uh, they got their advantage, and they want to make sure they maintain it. Uh, a bit of action going on top. Hannah Montana versus the Enigma, Dare G, but. Uh, He's not going to be going on it. He only he knows his gush is primarily used for setting up teammates, and he's not going to be wasting any mana trying to force off an enigma that's not going to be worth his tr trouble. Um, and so, uh, really, enig I was wondering why I haven't seen any Wisp teleports just yet. It's because he doesn't have it. He's level 5. He hasn't been able to use it as an escape, as an initiation, whatever. He's just... He's been so experience deprived, and he's really not been able to do anything as far as an impact in the game. Feed plays a really nice Wisp, but if he's not able to get that early game farm in any way, shape, or form, at least experience wise, then he's losing everything, and he's not going to be able to really apply much pressure in any way. Now they push going on bottom lane and on middle lane. A little bit of action between Hannah Montana and the Enigma. But overall, uh, he does have enough. So that gush is going to be coming up in three seconds. So is Malthus stun. So he's going to be trying to gush from here. He's going to get locked in by these creeps. Nothing to. He's, there's not an easy way for him to get out of here. But he has so much HP sustain. He's going to pop his pop his ravage. Now he's going to look for a gush. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, Dare G is microing him in. He does do the anchor smash across, and he almost got out. Um, but he's not going to be able to catch up to him in time. And uh, looks like Dare uh, G is going to get out of there. Um, however, Art Style covering up. Uh, he's going double bracer. He wants to move for that uh, drum, but right now he just doesn't feel like he has enough uh, sustainability right now. He doesn't have enough uh, strength, uh, every, anything really. He needs some more. Oh, wow. Hannah Montana coming in on the Enigma does get the gush off, and really he needs to get out of here with this Malefist stun right now. But if he gets in melee range of him, he can do the Anchor Smash pretty good there. Uh, Russian about to fall down, about ha under half life, getting tanked up by the Chen Creeps. And they're going to be acting on that pretty quick. Double damage rune, nice. And I uh, uh, can't tell what, if Brewmaster is going to be going for drama or what specifically, but the Queen of Pain does pick up the Aegis. And uh, curious to see if she's going for BKB or for Aghanims or what specifically. But we will see in no time at all because she's been farming amazingly. 
I mean, you can see not only an 807 KDA, also has a most last hits with 98. It's just incredible how much uh, TC has been able to get out of this these past couple of encounters as far as gold goes. I mean, a sheep stick that fast, pretty much unheard of, but it's just so fed right now. Uh, just so much potential, and it's so aggressive in team fights as well. And I've just been able to do so much with it. And uh, Vladimir is going to help out the panda uh, broodling. It's going to do more damage. And also just give everybody bonus armor so that Chaos Knight and possibly Forge Spirits aren't going to be really doing that much at all to him. Uh, Wisp coming in, trying to do a bit of aggression. Uh, he is uh, re relocating, but he's all by himself. He dro dropped the Invoker, and now uh, Chen Creep getting the uh, troll warlord thing on him but he's gonna go teleport back in just six seconds now chaos knight's the one all by himself does pop his phantasm um <coughs> but he does get popped up top i'm not sure how um venomancer does come down and uh uh now hannah montana looking for a good gush trying to finish off this chaos knight and he's, he's gonna get stunned out he's gonna stunned out by the panda in three seconds and goblin's gonna drop down too with this next note run he dropped down by himself and now they're trying to do some aggression onto fluff but he has his mech up just coming up now so even with this malfascent he's gonna be like nope Oh, but there is a nice black hole coming in, pulling in Fluff and IX Mike. Will it be enough damage? No, he's able to survive it. And with the Queen of Pain, cleaning it up real quick, using that Sonic Wave, and uh, just clean, clearing it up. Cleaning it up and uh, just giving no no room for Enigma to get that kill. And Dare just knows, okay, we, uh, we did well in the first one. Uh, you guys just dominating us in the second one. We're not going to drag this out. We know where this is, is going to lead. And uh, they drop out, so... That's going to be the end of the game. Check out the XP graph. Check out the gold graph. And that's uh, I mean, obviously very linear. just shows straight up how much, how they pressed their advantage early and they pressed it hard. And, uh, and that's it. So maybe I would show items, but I'm just going to jump to the end of the game. And that'll scoreboard it for you guys. But yeah, so this was the second match between Dare and uh, Complexity. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Very, very, very fast-paced game. And uh, all the all the ghosts are really complexity there. They did amazingly with that top lane. A high, high double kill at the beginning did not help their situation at all. And now end of the game, 31 to eight, only 19 and a half minutes in. GG's called. So well played, complexity in that one. Full show. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I'm relatively new to casting. I'd say I've only been casting for just over a month, but uh, I do have this cha YouTube channel, obviously, Blaze Casting. Uh, if you guys want to leave me any comments, uh, constructive criticism, what I can work on, I know I kind of repeat a couple of phrases too much, and i got to work on that, have a hesitation, ums, and meh, whatever. Uh, but overall, I'm just trying to get better at it, I get some more experience on the scene, and if you guys have any way to, uh, any advice to give me on that, that'd be awesome. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'm going to go to the next one. See ya.